Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Here's what taxpayers should know about backup withholdings. IRS Tax Tip 2021-156, October 21st, 2021. Let's first just recap withholdings in general, and then we'll talk about the backup withholdings. Most of us are familiar with the concept of withholdings on an employee situation. So if we're a W-2 employee, we know that we have withholdings for Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax that are taken out of our check from the employer. So that's the general idea. And if we think about this a little bit more broadly, if you are the IRS and we have an income tax and their job is to enforce the income tax, where do they have the leverage in order to do that with in the relationship of a business relationship where you have a payer and a receiver, they have the leverage on the payer because the person that is paying whatever the money that they're paying, whether that be the employee wages or whether that be contractor work or even individuals that are paying for something, the IRS is more likely to have leverage on them uh, to be able to report the income that is being given to somebody else because they're going to get the tax benefit, whereas the other person is going to be receiving the money, they're, they're going to have the, to pay the tax on it. And so the IRS has the leverage on the payer to try to get the payer to at least report the payments that they're making to the payee so the IRS can double check to make sure that the payee is reporting the taxes so that the IRS is getting the revenue from it in the form of taxes and or if they can push further than that to actually require the payer to withhold money as they give it to, to the person that they're paying, such as the employee situation. So in a, an employee situation, the IRS is saying, hey, employer, if you want to get a deduction for your payroll, which is a huge deduction, then we not only want you to report to us that you have paid the employee, we want to actually use you as our collection arm and you're going you're gonna to take the money directly from them and then pay it to the government. So that's the, the most clear cut case where you see that kind of withholding situation. If on the other hand, you're paying say a contractor and you're a business, the IRS doesn't have quite so much leverage. They can't say at this point, we want you to withhold the money directly while you pay it to the contractor. But instead, we want you to at least just give us the reporting, give us the 1099 information. Otherwise, you know, if you deduct that, then, you know, you could have a problem. So it's a similar kind of situation there. Now, on the individual side of things, if you're paying something and you're paying like a restaurant or something for like a wedding or something like that, then the IRS has less leverage on you because you're not a business. So they can't really say, do you want the deduction for your like your wedding cost that you paid the individual contractor? They can't really do that because you're not a business and you're not going to get the deduction on it. So that's going to be a little bit more of a difficult situation for the IRS. So that's the general rule. So now we got kind of certain circumstances where the IRS is saying, if you can't give us the information that we want, where we don't normally require you to withhold, we want you to withhold money and give it to us in a similar situation as you would have if you were an employer withholding money, taking the taxes directly out of your employee payroll. That's kind of the general concept. Okay, so backup withholdings. There's a link to backup withholdings. Ensure that the government is paid the correct amount of taxes on specific types of payments reported on certain forms 1099 and W2G. Here are some facts about backup withholdings. Backup withholding is required on certain non-payroll amounts when certain conditions apply. So notice we're talking now about non-payroll. So the IRS is reaching past payroll and, and saying, even in these other situations, we've got payroll right now, right? We've got payroll, meaning you're required to, to be our collection man if you're an employer. But if you're, if you're a contractor, then uh, there are still instances where the IRS is going to make you into their, their collection agency. So the payer making such payments to the payees does not generally withhold taxes and the payees report and pay taxes on this income when they file their federal tax returns. There are, however, situations when the payer is required to withhold a certain percentage of tax to make sure the IRS receives the tax due in this income. Backup withholding is a set of specific percentage. So the current percent is 24%. Now note, if you're in a employee, employer type of situation, you have to file a W-4. We know we have a progressive tax system. So you might say, hey, I have no idea how much to withhold, even if, even, you know, we really don't know how much to withhold, even if, even with a projection, because the tax code is quite complicated. So if you don't have the W-4, then how much should I withhold? 
given the fact that there's different tax brackets and they just picked a number. They picked the, picked the one in the middle, hit the one in the middle. They picked 24%, which is fairly high if you're on the low, if you're on a lower income kind of, kind of area for taxes with regards to the progressive tax rates. So payments subject to backup withholdings include agriculture payments, attorney's fees and gross proceeds paid to attorneys, uh, barter exchanges, commission fees or other payments uh, for work done as an independent contractor, dividends, gambling windings, if not subject to gambling withholding, interest payments, origin, original issue discount, uh, patronage dividends, but only if at least half the payment is in money, payment card and third party network transactions, payment by brokers, payments uh, by fishing boat operators, but only to only the part that is paid in actual money and that represents a share of the proceeds of the catch i'm not familiar with that but that's an interesting one uh, rents prof uh, profits or other gains royalty payments taxable grants taxpayers went examples when the taxpayer must deduct backup withholding so when do you have to do this backup withholding you're now the payer you're the payer and you're saying i'm not paying an employee i don't have to deal with that withholding thing all i have to do is do that 1099 thing at the end of the year in order to be in compliance. But in certain situations, the IRS is saying, no, no, backup withholdings, you're responsible in these situations. So when, when does that happen? So if a payee has not provided the payer a taxpayer identification number, the TIN, at the time the reportable payment uh, is made, or the payee provided an obviously invalid IT, TIN to the payer. So in other words, the IRS is saying, you're, you're paying this other person. So that means that you're the payer. We have the leverage on you. The other person is the one that's getting the income. And they're the one that we want to make sure are paying the taxes on their side. So we want to know how much they're getting paid. And we'd like to get our money now by you taking it before you give it to, to them, right? So, but, we're, but generally at this point in time, all you have to do is tell us who they are so that we can basically make sure and double check that they're paying their taxes based on the information that you gave us that you paid them, which means it should be income to them. But if they give you an invalid TIN number or identification number, then the IRS is saying, I don't know who this person is. So your 1099 is now worthless to the IRS because they can't use it to verify that this other person that you paid reported their income. So what do they want you to do then? They want you to take, you know, withholding and <laughs> take the withholding and pay the IRS directly. So they make sure that they get their money. So a TIN spe specifically identifies the payee. TINs include social security numbers, employer identification numbers, individual taxpayer identification numbers, and adoption taxpayer identification numbers. An obviously invalid TIN is one that has fewer than nine digits more than nine digits or contains non-numerical characters. So, I mean, if your P10 says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you're like, it's supposed to be numbers here, then the IRS is probably gonna say, hey, you know, you, you should have recognized that that was like invalid P10. So if the IRS notifies the payer that the payee provided a TIN that does not match your name in the IRS records and the payer does not secure the correct TIN from the payee, Payees should make sure that the payer has their correct name and TIN to avoid backup withholdings. So again, if, if, you, if you pay someone, you give them the wrong 1099 with the wrong information, the IRS is going to go after the payer and try to question them or possibly could at least to pressure them because they're the one getting the deduction and that's where the leverage is at. If the IRS notices the payer that the payee has uh, underreported income from interest and dividends, so payers liability for backup withholding. So the common question here would be, of course, well, I don't want to be your collection arm. What if I, what if I don't? What if I don't do that? So if a payment was subject to backup withholding, but the payer did not uh, deduct backup withholding as required from payment, the payer becomes liable for the tax. Well, that's not good. And that's where the stick comes in. So more information can be found at the links below. We got the Backup Withholding B program, Publication 1281, Backup Withholding for Missing and Incorrect Name TINs. There's links to those items here. There'll be a link to this in the description.